Hi guys, welcome back to the YouTube channel. For those of you who are new here, I'm Johnny Chivers, and in today's video, we're gonna take a look at AWS Cloud Search. We're gonna mix the theory and the practical together. We're gonna to start with a little bit of theory now, and then move on to the practical. The practical demo actually uses data off my website, thequestionbank.io. Thequestionbank.io is a website that I run for free. It contains questions in regards to AWS and other ICT qualifications that I put in or users submit and they pass a peer review process. Once they've passed the peer review process, they can be entered into quizzes that users take. And it's these questions we're going to use today as part of this AWS Cloud Search demo. I, on the back end of the question bank, actually run a search when users submit questions in and they pass the peer review process against that existing bank of questions just to make sure they don't already exist. So this is the actual real world example that I use. So first up, let's deal with the theory. What is AWS Cloud Search? AWS Cloud Search is a fully managed service from AWS that lets us implement search over our data. It can be in numerous formats, but the most common that I use is JSON. We supply the JSON document to AWS Cloud Search. It indexes on that document, and then we feed it the data we want. This is a very simplified version of search. I've already covered AWS Elasticsearch service on this channel, link above me now, where it's a more in-depth service and you have control over the infrastructure. When it comes to AWS Cloud Search, that infrastructure control or the granularity of the Elk stack, which is what Elastic runs on, is managed by AWS. So we at Cloud Search level don't have the same control as if we were running an Elastic cluster or the Elastic Search service, but what we get in return is the ability just to get on with that data. But why use AWS Cloud Search if it's just effectively an abstracted Elastic Search service, which is an abstracted Elastic cluster? Really, it's just so you don't have to manage the infrastructure. You lose some control in the granularity. You also lose some of the ability that you would have around the likes of Kibana out of the box using the other services. But what you get in return is just the ability to get on with making your data searchable. If you don't have to worry about the overhead of running the clusters or configuring the indexes yourself, then AWS Cloud Search is the service for you. If you need more control over that Elk stack, then you have to go for something like AWS Elastic Search Service or spin up your own Elastic clusters. If you don't really need that granular control, especially over the infrastructure, and you just want to get your data indexed and get on with searching, then AWS Cloud Search is the service for you. But when do we use AWS Cloud Search? Well, putting what we've already said together, we come to the conclusion, it's when we want to search over our data, but we don't want the overhead of managing the infrastructure and indexes completely ourselves. As I said, there are limitations to this approach, but what it does allow us to do is get on with just managing the data. And that's why I use it on the question bank. It's where I just go in on the back end and I search the questions um, that users have submitted to make sure they're not already in the stack as one final pass after peer review. And if they're fine and they're not there, I just let them go in. And it was the quickest way for me to build a search service around the website so we could look at all those questions in an administrative way. Obviously, there's other things you can do with it, like put it into your blog if you want to build a search around your blog, put it into your e-commerce website if you want to build a search around your products, or even put it into an app that you're developing that you need to run a search through. So that could be something like a music product where you want to look for artists. So the possibilities are endless, but you have to get the data in the right format for Elasticsearch. And that's something that I'm going to cover in the demo right now in the console. So join me there where we'll look at a real life example on the question bank and we'll use the data for the questions to show you how I build a search service out of it. Okay guys, that's me logged into the AWS console. Going to go to cloud search first um, to show you what happens when I'm in the London region. Just so we're all aware, so if you type in Cloud Search and you click on it, so you will see the Cloud Search is only available in certain regions. It's not available in all regions. So I'm going to take Ireland. And once on Ireland, you'll see that it's a very simplified GUI, especially compared to Elasticsearch service, which we covered before. So it's quite simple, really. You click Create a New Search Domain. You have to give the search domain a name, so I'm going to call this test search. You can call yours whatever you feel like. Let's just leave everything as default, and again, you're only paying for what you use here, so it shouldn't cost you very much um, at all, and if you're on free tier, you might even get 
what we're doing for free. So how we're going to do this is I want to analyze sample files from my local machine. So I have put my files up on GitHub for you guys. You can go in the description below and look at those sample files. One's called the index template, which I'm going to use to create the index. And then the other one has two records that reflect that index. Now the setup of these files is very, very important. If we look at the index one, what it basically expects, what it expects is a fields key, then a list of the fields, and then data related to that field. The fields with the keys, the value can be string or integer or an array, mainly. I try to keep it just as ints, strings, and arrays. So you can see here that this is a string. You can see here this is an array of strings, and you can see here that this is an integer, and you can see here that this is an integer array. This data is actually a replication of the data that I use on the question bank, which I've put the link in the description below. It's a completely free resource. And these are the actual questions that come back when users come in to actually make a quiz on the question bank. So again, when we hit here and we go off and create that quiz, so it'll take a couple of seconds, start the quiz. This object here that we see on screen is actually coming from this JSON. And that means then I can use cloud search to search the different questions that are contained within the question bank. So there's a real life example of cloud search in action. I put in the questions from the question bank and then I have a search domain where I can search for those questions as a user just to make sure we don't have duplication and things like that. And again, I reiterate, it's so important to have this layout. It also needs that ID and it also needs a type. So you have add and remove. So we've add in when we go to add in the actual data itself, it'll add all the data. And if you have a remove, then using the ID, it will remove that JSON if it already exists in the search engine. So important things, fields have to be laid out like this. So if you're doing your own, then take the fields and then replace what I have here with your data. You need an ID and you need to tell it where it's add or remove and type. If you're add, then you're adding everything in data wise and you've remove, you wanna remove that from the search domain that you set up. So add, remove, ID, fields, simple as that. So back onto cloud search itself and I want to analyze files from my local machine. I wanna choose a file. I wanna to go to the index template, that's the one I'm looking for. So I'm gonna use one template, the index, and then the records have the actual records that I'm gonna to add to the index. So index, click open and click continue. Then leave everything as default and click continue. Let's go for an open access policy. Obviously you wouldn't use this in production, but as this is just a test, it keeps things kind of simple for us. Then click continue, it's picked up all those fields that we're looking for, like answer, difficulty, explanation, and click confirm. And you can see that it's often initializing. This can take up to 10 minutes. Generally, it does take 10 minutes. Um, so I'll click OK. I'll pause the video here. And then once it's ready to go, it'll become active in green. We'll pick the video back up. That took about 10 minutes. And as you can see, we're now active, but we have no searchable documents. So next thing we want to do is go to upload documents. You want to use files on the local PC or local disk, considering that you've downloaded them from my GitHub. And then it's records for index. Click OK and click continue. It gives you out the um, documents and the fields that it can find in them. So that matches our index. We click OK and you can see that we have successfully added two documents to that search domain and that's because obviously as I said the records for index are both on the add uh, side of things. So back onto cloud search and if we refresh this page now you can see that we actually have two. We can run a test search here or we can go to test search here. Once here let's just click in S3 and go and you can see that it's able to find S3. If I wanted to run something a bit more like the actual explanation, I could take this and hit go, and it brings me back that one record. So that's really it for today, guys. As you can see, it's a lot easier to get cloud search up and running, but you don't have as much configuration as if you're on AWS Elastic Search Service. With that being said, I'll make all this information for free as usual on my website, www.johnnychivers.co.uk. And until next time, guys, thanks for watching.